This is the full section of chapter one on data collection and this section is on types of data. So let's have a look at the different types of data we can have. So our data can be split into two main groups, quantitative data, which is numerical data, that's data which is collected, which is all number based. They could be whole numbers, they could be fractions, they could be decimals, uh, any type of number. Whereas data, which is non-numerical, so they may be descriptions, they may be words, they may be letter, is qualitative data. Now, quantitative data can be split into two types. Continuous data, so this is numerical data that can take any value. So for example, let's say data about the height of something or the weight of something, or numerical data can take uh, or be called discrete data. This is where the data can only take specific values, normally like whole numbers. So this could be, for example, uh, the numbers you get when, a ro when you roll a dice. The only values you're going to get are going to be whole numbers from one to six. Now we're just going to have a brief look here at group frequency tables. So when we've got large amounts of continuous or discrete data, we want to display it in a grouped frequency table. And just a few definitions we need to know about, and you've probably heard of these before. So the first one is the class boundary. So when we've got a group frequency table, the class boundary represents the maximum and minimum values that can go into any group. Midpoint, you would have come across this before when you're working out maybe the mean from a frequency table. This is the halfway value between the maximum and the minimum. So you could actually add the maximum and the minimum together, divide by two to find the midpoint. So it's the average of these two values. And the class width, well, that's the difference between the maximum and minimum value that go into each group. So it's what we call the upper class boundary. That's the la very largest value that can grow into a group minus the lower class boundary, the very smallest value that can go into a group. And when we do this subtraction, we get a number which is called the class width. Example four, the length X to the nearest millimeter of the four wings of a random sample of male adult butterflies are measured and shown in the table. So here's the table here. Part A, state whether the length is quantitative or qualitative. So first of all, um, the length is a numerical value here. The length is a numerical value, so it's quantitative. And the second part of part A, is it discrete or continuous? Well, the length can take any value. So that means that it's continuous and normally things that you measure are continuous things that you count are discrete normally that's a helpful way of thinking of it then in part b write down the class boundaries the midpoint and the class width for the class 34 to 36. now for this class that's 34 to 36 you might be tempted to say well the class boundaries a 34 and 36. But let's look at these groups. And you see there's a gap here between the 33 and the 34. What we need to do is to close these gaps and we need to write down the very largest value. So um, I would actually be doing this. So you can see the gaps get closed. I'm adding and subtracting 0.5 from each group. So that'd be 36.5 and then 36.5 and then 39.5 here. And then I could add these inequality signs to show that then there's no overlap. But the group that goes 34 to 36, it's class boundaries. Let's write them down here. Class boundaries are actually here 33.5 and 36.5 so 33.5 millimeters and upper class boundary 36.5 millimeters right okay the other thing that we need to write down is the midpoint 
So to find a midpoint, we would find the average of these two, which is the same actually as finding the averages of these two. It will be the same calculation, but if I'm going to do the proper calculation, it's going to be 33.5 plus 36.5 divided by 2. But you'll notice if you do that calculation, you'll get the same as if you do 34 plus 36 divided by 2. And that's going to be a value of 35. So 35 millimeters. OK, so this is the proper calculation, but we can also use this as well. And then the last thing we need to do is to find the class width. So that's the difference between the upper class boundary and the lower class boundary. So class width, class width. That's going to be 36.5 minus 33.5. And that gives three millimeters. So I'll just highlight those answers here. So here's my class boundaries. Here's my midpoint. And here's the class width. So you should now be able to do exercise 1D on page 10.